In this video, I want to show how to do database migrations with Flyway and Quarkus applications by using the Quarkus Flyway integration. In the last video, I showed how to do database migrations in managed Kubernetes environments in general, where it's, um, it doesn't matter which technology you use. And in this case, I want to show you how Quarkus integrates with this tool. There is a guide available how to um, integrate Flyway in your Quarkus application, and it's quite straightforward. You will add a dependency to um, your build, and then you place all your migration scripts in a specific folder. What I do then in this case, I have to configure um, what I want to configure, uh, what I want to migrate with Flyway or how it should work. And I say, well, please always migrate at start and also set this baseline version that I used uh, previously in a manual way as well. So I want to set the baseline version initially to zero because then my application migration start at one again and they are placed under resources DB migrations with the same uh, example that I showed you in the last video. What I do then in this case, that is uh, basically everything I have to configure here. And my Kubernetes YAML then in this case only contains the image of my um, application, the Docker image, which then I can roll out. I again use a managed um, uh, Kubernetes service from the IBM cloud and also a managed Postgres uh, instance in the same uh, way like I showed you earlier. So we can have a look at my uh, database, which is right now empty, this schema. And I want to apply my um, deployment and the coffee shop here for my application. In this case, it does not use an init container um, like the last example, but everything is contained in the application. So this means that once my application starts up and I can have a look at the uh, log output here, then it will just do the migration here. So it says, okay, creating um, the table um, for the schema history with the baseline because I'm setting the baseline version to zero and then it automatically um, sets the migration to the current active migration, which is version one. And we can have a look at the schema here. So in this case, it creates the orders table, just like in the previous example. Um, you could uh, check out uh, the code which is available on GitHub and then you can check out all of the uh, migrations that are available here. I'm just um, showing um, the second one and then you can walk through uh, the other ones yourself because then it's very similar to the last video and it's a quite straightforward approach because we always place the migration scripts and um, also in the application, in the build um, application binary as well, and it will match with the code that we have. So for example, once we add this temporary column to rename the column type to coffee type again, then this will match with the migration script that creates it in a database and also my coffee or the class that then has this temporary um, field while we are in the state of migrating. So now uh, just to the question, what is the pro and con of using Flyway or database migration uh, in the application itself using this integration or using it in a somewhat um, a standalone way by using an init container? It really depends what your application uh, is doing here. So if um, you want to have this more pragmatic uh, approach that tangles your application more to the environment by using the migration school uh, tool directly in your application, then it might make sense to use this uh, flyway migration directly from Quarkus with the support. Um, otherwise, it might be um, a better approach to just do it from the outside to be um, to let it be managed from the environment by doing the init container approach. So for example, if you might use different uh, technologies um, in different projects and then um, you want to have a more uh, unified approach of doing these migrations, which is also usually more of a DevOps or ops um, related uh, topic, um, how to do migrations, especially with zero downtime deployments, then it might make sense to have a unified approach to always use uh, an init container, for example, approach or a process that is out of band with your application deployments. So you're definitely more flexible if you do it um, in a separated way. Uh, but the way of um, the way of bounding, bound, bundling it with the application uh, just enables you to be a little bit more pragmatic because then your migration version will always uh, per default or implicitly match your um, application version because it matches the code in one commit or one version that you deploy. 
and this will always uh, then be applied. So it depends whether you want more flexibility or being more pragmatic here on this side, which approach to use. Uh, but both approaches work uh, pretty well, also from experience, and then this can be used in order to achieve zero downtime deployments. Thanks for watching.